In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate the pressure within a U-tube. A U-tube, originally containing mercury, has water added to one arm to a depth of 20 centimeters, as shown in the diagram below. What is the pressure at the water-mercury interface? That is this part right here. And what is the height of the mercury column as measured from the water-mercury level? And that's this part right here. With that being said, let's look at an important formula that we'll need to answer this question, and that's the formula for the change in pressure shown underneath, where pressure is equal to rho, and that's the density of the material, in this case it's water, times the acceleration due to gravity represented as g times the height. The height needs to be in meters because the units for pressure are newtons per meter squared, or pascal, so we need to make sure that it's in meters. I'll go ahead and change 20 centimeters into meters. And that's easy, just divide by 100. We get 0 0.20 meters. All right, so the pressure here is the combined pressure of the atmosphere plus the pressure of the water itself. So I'll say pressure is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere plus the pressure of the water. If we neglect the pressure of the atmosphere, and set it equal to zero, we can easily find the gauge pressure by only calculating this part. Let me show you how that's done. So I have P is equal to rho, this letter being the density of water, 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed, multiplied to the acceleration due to gravity being 9.8 meters per second squared, multiplied to the height of 0 0.20 meters. Notice that the units M, M, and two of these will cancel out, giving us the units kilograms per meter times second squared. Now notice that this is not matching with newtons per meter squared. One newton is kilograms times meters per second squared. This one doesn't even have a meters at the top. So what I could do is multiply the top and the bottom by meters, and this will end up giving us kilograms meters per second squared, which accounts for one newton, and meters times meters at the bottom is meters squared, and that accounts for the denominator. So our end result will be whatever the product of these three numbers are, and the units newtons per meter squared, or Pascal. So I have 1,000 times 9.8 times 0 0.20, and that is the pressure right there, neglecting atmospheric pressure. 1960 newtons per meters squared. So the pressure that the water exerts onto mercury is 1960 pascals, and it has to equal to the pressure here. And if you're confused by that, if they weren't equal, the liquids would move. They're at equilibrium now, so the pressure here should be equal to the pressure there. That being said, we can find out the height of this column relative to where the water meets the mercury here by taking this value of 1960, setting it as the pressure in this formula. The density of mercury should be given to you in the question, and that value is 14 times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms per meters cubed. Multiply to the acceleration due to gravity times the height, which is what we're looking for. We'll multiply these two factors together, then divide both sides of the equation by the product, and that will give us the value of h. So 14 times 10 to the power of 3 times 9.8, and we'll take this value, divide both sides of the equation by it. This leads us to 1,960 divided by the answer that our calculator gave us previously. And we get a height of 0 0.01428, and that's in meters. If I want to make this into centimeters, I multiply by 100. should give us an accurate representation of what's going on here. And we get 1.4 centimeters increase in height as a result of placing that much water on the left side. So we found the pressure at the water mercury interface and we found the height of the mercury column as measured from the water mercury level over here.